Is Mary the woman in Revelation 12? Catholic Church claims that Mary is the woman identified in Revelation 12, the woman clothed with the sun. Is there any truth to such a claim? The Catechism of the Catholic Church actually says that when we look at Mary, we can recognize that she was, quote, exalted by the Lord as queen over all things. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 966. Whoa, <laughs> that's heavy. It's one thing to be the queen of England, right, like Elizabeth. It's another thing to be the queen of all things, <laughs> okay? That is an extremely exalted title, an extremely exalted status. Why? Well, because what is the nature of the kingdom that she's queen over? It's not the kingdom of earth. It's the kingdom of heaven. Catholics see Mary as just as important as Jesus. They consider Mary to be the co-redemptrix, which means she is crucial to the redemption of the human race. The critical word here is plays, as in Mary is currently involved in the redemption of all humankind. I think the fact that she's um, the new Eve. Irenaeus says Christ is the new Adam, Mary's the new Eve. Our, our devotion to Mary is she's, um, she's part of the remaking of the human race that's involved in salvation. That's involved in salvation. This indicates that Jesus alone would not be enough to save you. Unfortunately, this belief is not only unbiblical, but it is also blasphemous. Jesus said in John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. However, Catholic Church teaches that to get to Jesus, who is God incarnate, you must go through Mary, and without Mary's intervention, you cannot be redeemed. In salvation. This helps to explain why many Catholics believe Mary is the woman of Revelation 12.1. So, if you see Mary present in Revelation chapter 12, something important follows from that. Actually, two things. Notice... Where is she, number one? She's in heaven, right? I saw a woman in heaven. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. And secondly, she's wearing a crown. Of how many stars? 12 stars, representing the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 apostles, right? So she's like queen over the church. Queen over the church. Revelation 12, 1, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Before we go any further, bear in mind that the book of Revelation is filled with symbols and woman symbolically represents the church, God's people, and not a literal woman. It says in Revelation 12, verse 1, 2, and 5, There I saw a what? A woman clothed with the sun, moon under her feet, upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Some say this woman is Mary. No, Mary is a type of of this woman. But as you read on, you'll find out this woman represents God's people. And as you read on it, you realize it can't be Mary. It doesn't ever say Mary fled into the wilderness, chased by the dragon who tried to swallow her with a flood for 1260 years. So it's not Mary. But Mary is a type of the church and she was a pure woman that was chosen to be, to bring forth or introduce Christ to the world. And the purpose of the church in the Old Testament, the Old Testament had a church too, you know. Just means the church means gathering was to introduce Christ to the world. There are many verses in the Holy Scripture that depict the church as a woman. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians 5.25-27 Also, Revelation 19.7 depicts God's people as the wife or bride of the Lamb. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Revelation 19.7 You might be wondering why verse 2 of Revelation 12 specifically mentions the woman is pregnant with a child. Obviously it has to be Mary. No. After the fall of Adam and Eve, God began the plan of salvation and redemption for humanity. The same word woman appears in Genesis 3.15 and Revelation 12. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Genesis 3.15 This is the first messianic prophecy in the Bible. Through the woman, not Mary, but God's people, or what we collectively call the church today, the Messiah would be born. The serpent, Satan, will bruise his heel by having him, Jesus, tortured and crucified on the cross. But he, that is Jesus, the seed of the woman, will bruise the head of Satan. 
Through his death on the cross and victorious resurrection on the third day, Jesus would ultimately defeat Satan. In Genesis chapter 3, we have the fall. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, God gives us a promise, the gospel. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. That's chapter 3 of Genesis. Chapter 2, everything's perfect. Chapter 3, there's a fall and God declares war. In the book of Revelation, we see the war. We see the seed of the woman there in chapter 12, which the dragon wants to devour, but he cannot. And then we see the serpent crushed and done away with. And we go back to a place where there is a tree and the garden and the rivers. Catholics would argue that in Revelation, literal individuals were mentioned, such as the child, Messiah, and the dragon, Satan. And the third person, the woman, must be an individual too. Three main characters in this vision. Number one, you have a child. Number two, you have the dragon. And then number three, you have the woman, right? The child symbolizes an individual. Who is the king of kings who rules over the nations? It's Christ, it's Jesus, right? The dragon symbolizes an individual. John actually goes on to tell you a few verses later that the dragon was Satan, a fallen angel, right? So if the child is an individual and the dragon is an individual, what does that suggest to you about the woman? That she's also an individual, right? Well, who is the woman who bore the Messiah? It's Mary, okay? Interestingly, Revelation 17.3 mentions another woman who sits on a scarlet beast full of names of blasphemy, and this represents an apostate church. We will unseal the mystery of this woman who sits on a scarlet beast in another video. Subscribe to our channel, like and share with others. Let us know what you think in the comments section. If the woman in Revelation 12 is actually Mary, we have a fundamental problem that proponents of this theory will struggle to solve. First and foremost, Mary did not escape into the wilderness, nor was she persecuted. If this woman is Mary, verses 6 and 13 of Revelation 12 appear to imply that she escaped into the desert and was persecuted. Certainly not. This is a reference to the saints of God who are persecuted because of their faith in Jesus. After Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, the followers of Jesus endured untold persecutions in the hands of agents of the dragon, that is, Jewish leaders and Romans. True disciples of Jesus Christ were fed to hungry lions, decapitated, burnt alive, crucified, roasted in oil, and many had their babies ripped out of their wounds, and so on. Furthermore, some Bible scholars believe that throughout the Dark Ages, at the height of religious persecution, Christians were killed by the millions, and the remainder of God's people left Europe for America, where they were safe from persecutions. Second, Mary was not given two wings to fly, either literally or metaphorically, as depicted in Revelation 12:14. God provided persecuted Christians with a short reprieve from Satan's attacks, which were carried out through human agents, and believers were spared religious persecutions. Third, Mary was not swept away by the flood of water the dragon spewed out of this mouth. We could go on, but the evidence is compelling. When the full passage is read in context, it is apparent that Mary does not match the description of the woman clothed with the sun. The sun symbolizes the righteousness of Jesus. The woman here represents God's people, who keep the testimony of Jesus. Well, in Old Testament times, if you saw a woman sitting on a throne, and she's wearing the crown of 12 stars, guess what that means? She is the queen, but not the wife of the king, the mother of the king. So notice all the evidence in the New Testament points to Mary as not just being the mother of Jesus or um, the mother of God or a beautiful virgin girl who's holy and pure, but also to queen mother. 